Bonjour, hi, Canada, and to my listeners in Israel, welcome as well. I know some of you have begun to listen to the show late at night. Uh, of course, you know the war is resumed. All of you know the war is resumed in Gaza after repeated breaches by Hamas last night and rocket fire from Gaza into Israel last night. So the IDF resumed war in Gaza about four hours ago, and they are not going to stop this time. Now, some of the families of the hostages that remain will be upset with Prime Minister Netanyahu, Defense Minister Gallant, and Minister Gantz, the War Cabinet. The vast majority of Israelis and the vast majority of people who support Israel, and that includes me, will realize and will accept and indeed applaud the War Cabinet's decision not to be pushed around anymore by Hamas. Now, I believe Hamas must have gotten exactly the wrong signal from Tony Blinken's disastrous press conference and meetings in Israel yesterday. For those of you who know anything about history, in January of 1950, Dean Acheson gave a speech at the press club, which North Korea and Joseph Stalin completely misunderstood, and the Korean War followed because Russia and North Korea understood Acheson to be saying that South Korea was not in America's zone of interest. Well, if Hamas watched the Blinken press conference yesterday, and assuredly they did, they must have concluded that Israel would, lead, would be forced to stop fighting, period. Secretary Blinken said so many stupid things in that press conference. Moreover, in the readout of the meeting that he had with senior Israeli officials and directly to Defense Minister Gallant, when Gallant said the war would resume when the last hostage possible was released, Blinken said, I don't think you have the credit to do that. And I, I think at that moment, the moment he left the room, the Israelis looked at each other and said, screw him. If they breach the agreement again, and they did, we're going back to war immediately, and they have. So Secretary Blinken, do us all a favor and stay out of the region. You are a walking disaster. We saw it in Afghanistan. We saw it in Ukraine. We now see it in Israel. And the reaction online is the reaction which was deserved yesterday. Blinken astonished and angered every friend of Israel. The idea that he would go and lecture Israel on the, ar the laws of armed combat when Israel has never not observed the laws of armed combat, has been very careful in its use of force, very targeted, and by the way, this morning resumed its compliance, uh, its over-compliance with the laws of armed conflict. I read from the Wall Street Journal's silo of breaking news from Israel. The Israeli military dropped leaflets in the southern Gaza Strip, warning people to, quote, leave immediately and head towards shelters in the Rafah area, and at, which is at the southernmost tip of Gaza, as the aerial bombardment of the enclave resumed. Khan Yunus, a city in the southern Gaza Strip, quote, is a dangerous war zone, close quote, the leaflet said. Southern Gaza is widely expected to be a main focus in the next phase of the war, after Israel previously focused on the northern area of the enclave. What I want to stress to you is that there is no alternative here. Hamas must be destroyed. In the next segment, I will play you some clips from this disastrous Blinken press conference yesterday. But Israel has said it again and again. And anyone who understands anything about anything understands that Hamas must be destroyed. If Hamas was watching that Blinken press conference yesterday, Sinwar and his terrorist horror show monsters must have decided that Blinken, he, he looked ashen and shaky. Blinken looked like a man overwhelmed by this. And I was reminded that war can break some people. I'm a civilian. I've never been to war. And I haven't had to advise presidents in war. I have sympathy for Secretary Blinken kind of blowing it uh, because he's just not used to this. And the Obama administration led from behind where he was the DEPSEC and all that stuff. He's used to appeasement. It's what they did in Afghanistan. He's having flashbacks of the disaster that was in Afghanistan. And somehow... He got the message that he should say something other than, we stand with Israel, Hamas must be destroyed. He said nothing like that. Whatever you say in private doesn't matter about proportionality and where you ought to go and how you ought to wage the war. In public and in the leak, he was obviously communicating to Israel and thus to Hamas and Iran 
that you've got to stop this thing. And Israel is not going to stop. If you have listened to this show at all, if you go back and listen to the highly concentrated Hugh podcast with Haviv Redigur, with Dan Senor, with Michael Oren, again and again and again, I have been stressing for weeks, Israel cannot allow Hamas to exist because Hamas murdered 1,200 plus Israelis in savage fashion, often raping and torturing the women. They murdered children. And it doesn't matter whether they beheaded one or 20. They just murdered children in their cribs. They kidnapped children. Yesterday, the word reached us that they murdered baby Kafir and his brother and his mother. The hostages have begun to tell their story, stories of being tortured, of being held in cages, of little boys being marked with the exhaust tailpipes of motorcycles so that they would be identifiable if they ran away. It's horrific stuff. It's the stuff of nightmares. And that's what Hamas is, a nightmare that must be be destroyed. So the one thing that Tony Blinken could have said yesterday that might have helped Israel get its hostages back and win the war is that Hamas must be destroyed and we are here to help Israel destroy it. After it is destroyed, we will help Israel control Gaza until such time that Palestinian leadership emerges that can take over the self-government of Gaza. And that doesn't mean you, Abbas, you old and corrupt dictator of the West Bank, who can't run anything. I mean, forceful messaging, a competent diplomacy. If Mike Pompeo had gone and done this, this would not have happened. But then again, the war wouldn't have happened if Trump had been reelected and Pompeo was still there and O'Brien was still the National Security Council. This gang of clowns in the White House has done nothing but blunder from crisis to crisis. And Hamas is the ultimate responsible person here. I don't want anyone to think other than that. Hamas are the monsters. Hamas did this, this unthinkable act, which many people are choosing not to think about or have forgotten about. But on this first day of December, we have to pray for Israel, pray for the quick success of the Israeli defense forces. I was listening to the commentary podcast last night, and John Podhoritz pointed out, the people who are fighting this war are not the television news analysts and not the reporters and not the war cabinet. They're 18 and 19 and 20-year-old IDF soldiers up against terrorists of every sort and shape. And the people who are suffering, the innocents of Gaza who are suffering, babies just born. There are lots of innocents in Gaza, don't get me wrong. And Israel is doing everything it can to spare them, like dropping these leaflets and directing their airstrikes. But there will be civilian casualties. There have been civilian casualties because there are 20,000 Hamas terrorists hiding in hospitals and adjacent to schools. And yesterday, or last night, began firing rockets again at the innocent people of Israel. Israel has no choice but to go and destroy Hamas, however long it takes, however high the cost to the IDF, and however many civilian deaths cannot be avoided, no matter how rigorous Israel is in its application of the laws of armed conflict. And it is rigorous indeed. Anthony Blinken, stay out of the region. Jake Sullivan, stay out of the region. All you have to do again and again and again is say that the United States stands with Israel. The United States believes Hamas must be destroyed. The United States has two carriers there and Hezbollah listen to us. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's the only message that needed to be delivered again and again and again. And instead, this disastrous meeting and the idea of telling Gallant, the defense minister, told Blinken, and the transcript came out yesterday afternoon. The defense minister, Gallant, tells Blinken, we will continue to fight until Hamas is destroyed, however long it takes. And Blinken said, according to the transcript, I don't think you have the credit to do that. As Noah Rothman said in National Review yesterday, dwell on that word credit, as though Israel got some sort of bank account of suffering because of October 7th, and has now drawn it down to zero or a negative bound. That is so offensive, so deeply malign, so tone deaf. Blinken, please just stay away from this. Joe Biden, don't say anything other than there's a script. The script is America stands behind Israel, which has suffered a savage blow, and we will support Israel until Hamas is destroyed. The only option for Hamas is to immediately release all of the remaining hostages and arrange for transport from Gaza to Iran. That's it. 
That's the only option. Otherwise, you'll all be killed. And the tunnels will be destroyed, and the Israeli army will be patrolling the perimeter of Gaza for a very long time. Stay tuned, America. I'm Tim Hewitt. You're listening to the 12-1, the first day of December, Tim Hewitt Show. Welcome back, America. I'm Hugh Hewitt, back inside the Beltway this morning. I want to make clear one thing. I do not blame Anthony Blinken for the terrorist activity of Hamas. Hamas breached the truth this morning. But I do believe that yesterday's press conference is among the most disastrous press conferences in American history. And the meeting that Blinken had with the IDF and Defense Minister Gallant in Israel, among the most disastrous bits of failed diplomacy ever undertaken by an American diplomat. Here are just three quick excerpts from the press conference yesterday. Cut number 10, Anthony Blinken. As I told the Prime Minister, intent matters, but so does the result. You know what that means? That means we know you intend to comply with the rules of war, but that's not good enough, even though it is good enough under the rules of armed conflict. You can't actually hurt any civilians, even though that's not how we conducted our wars against ISIS, against the Taliban, against Al Qaeda in Iraq. Those are just our four most recent ones. That's not how Ukraine is fighting. But you're you're on a different standard, Israel. Then he said this, cut number 11. It's obviously challenging given the particular conditions that Israel has to deal with in getting uh, to uh, Hamas and making sure, again, that it can't represent the threat that it posed um, on October 7th. Does anyone not hear what that is? It's not a call for, it's difficult for Iraq to destroy Hamas, but Hamas, they must be destroyed. And so they have to be very careful. But we will back them in everything they do and they're complying with the laws of war. That he's saying... Hamas can't be allowed to do what they did again on 10-7. That's not a call for the destruction of Hamas. That's anything but the call for destruction of Hamas. Listen to this bit about the Red Cross. I was reeling. I was watching this in the Phoenix airport. Probably the person next to me thought I was nuts. I had my uh, uh, ear pods in. And watching him live from Israel, not, I could not believe what I was seeing. Cut number 12. Clearly, it would be very beneficial and important for the Red Cross to have access uh, to hostages, to be able to um, uh, check on their well-being uh, and, uh, and condition. Uh, having said that, of course, none of that should be necessary because there shouldn't be any hostages in the first place. Uh, do, you understand, do you know how weak that is? Look, he looks ashen-faced. He looks shaken. And that may be because... The Israeli war cabinet and the IDF said, go to hell, Tony. We're doing what we're going to do. And I believe, I, I really do think, he, he has no idea what he's doing. He's blundering around. But instead of, it gets a question about the Red Cross. He should say, the Red Cross has failed. The Red Cross has failed completely. They didn't even get medicine to the sick old lady who almost died because they could not be troubled to get medicine to Hamas. And, and Hamas must be destroyed. He, they, he should be like Cato the Elder. Carthage must be destroyed. Cato the Elder, for his long, long career, at any speech that he gave, no matter where he was, he could be lighting the Christmas tree on the mall, and Cato the Elder would say, and Carthage must be destroyed at the end of his speech. Every American person in the Blinken administration, because it is the Blinken administration, or maybe it's the Jake Sullivan administration, we don't know where the president is, and he doesn't know what he's saying, ought to end every speech with, and Hamas must be destroyed. And by the way, Hezbollah, you will be destroyed. If you do anything remotely like what Hamas did in Iran, that goes for you, too. All we have to say again and again and again is Hamas must be destroyed and we support Israel and we applaud their compliance with the rules of armed conflict, which has been precise and careful. Civilians will die and then it would help if Americans and, you know, we regret every civilian death that came as a result of our invasion and occupation of Afghanistan for 20 years because we were trying to do the right thing. But we were very, very careful. And we observed the laws of proportionality. And we observed the laws as much as possible. We did it again with ISIS when they took over Mosul. But they took over a hospital in Mosul, so we had to bomb that. We did it through our long, and our troops continue to do it, in Iraq and Syria. America does not ever operate in a military theater without great concern for the laws of armed conflict. 
But all that law of proportionality means is that when you're pursuing a military objective, you must take into account the civilian death toll or, or risk. It may happen, but you must consider it in proportion to the value of the military risk. So you do not blow up 10,000 civilians to get to one terrorist unless, unless that terrorist is Sinwar. Then you, you, you do what you have to do to go get Sinwar. Uh, probably not 10,000. I don't know what the rule is. I know the Israelis have got very, very careful rules in place. But I know that Anthony Blinken does not have a clue. Not a single freaking clue. And I don't think, what, when I woke up this morning, I was ready to come down and to the studio and absolutely rail about the press conference and tell Israel, don't even pay attention to Blinken. But instead, I don't have to. Because Israel came to that conclusion yesterday, and they waited for Hamas to inevitably do what Hamas did. They were encouraged by the stupidity of Blinken's remarks, no doubt, to start firing rockets again because they thought they had an insurance policy in Blinken. And they started firing rockets again, and they didn't turn over the names this morning. And the IDF said, that's it. We're done. The war cabinet actually told the IDF, that's it. We're done. Go get them. And so Godspeed to the Israeli Defense Forces. God protect the innocents of Gaza, and God get the hostages home. And God, please, get through to Tony Blinken and Jake Sullivan. Stay out of this. You do not know what you're doing. I'm Hugh Hewitt.